Well, Delling, this is the end, my friend. Yes, it is, sir. Uh, is, is this the last one that we do, or the next to last? Uh, next to the last, but it's the last one that really means anything. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Kind of down, but... I, me too, me too. I, are you feeling okay, like at home, at work? At home, yes. But at work kind of got to me today. I contemplated slicing my throat with the edge of a poker chip. Because it was, had a little bit of a, a jagged edge to it. And I was like, I can't believe this happened. I don't want to be around here anymore. Damn it. Is it what, what is it, the fact that Craig is moving on to the finals? Uh, yes. The fact that now Craig is, we might call him the wizard because he's won three championships. But now he also is going to be in the four championships. And that was one of my claims. I was the only person to ever make it to four championships. Nobody else has done it. And nobody else will do it. <laughs> yeah, now well, Craig has done it. And all we can really hope for is that he gets a loss because we, we desperately can't have him with four wins, four championships. Uh, desperate is right. I haven't even looked at the matchup. Uh, I'll make my decision. Of course, I will. I want Tree to win, of course. Duh. Duh. Everybody does. The, yeah. He has, it's, it's Tree and 10 guys behind him versus Craig. <laughs> yeah, you got there. And maybe Craig is even like pulling for Tree a little bit because he's never won one. No, he's not. You know, I know. Not. Get out of here. Maybe Justin's in his corner. Maybe there's nine guys for Tree and one guy for Craig. Oh man, I, I can't imagine Justin pulling for him. I mean, the Kitchen of Love uh, championships. Possibly, yeah. Maybe he would want to bring it back to Rizzo's for the for two years in a row. That's the only reason. Yeah, I mean, because he drinks for free. <laughs> he does. He drinks for free. You still own two beers, <laughs> and I owe you one beer now. So. It's true. I don't even remember the bet, but I'm gonna take the take the beer. I picked Bean over Tree. Oh so yeah, I mean, that's tree, true. Tree beat him pretty soundly. Yeah, so I will take that beer and I'll forward it to Bean. All right. Well, also I'm gonna look at that John John Brown. Yeah, I might lose that. We might break even. Yeah. So hopefully we do. If we don't, then I'm just gonna give one beer to Jut, one beer to Bean, <laughs> and then I will only own one. It's true. It's true. Well, this is Matt Detling, Tontable One and Three Champ, yeah. and I mean. Since there's no Tonto Bowl 2 records, <laughs> I am the first ever back-to-back -back champion. Um, That's your fault. What do you mean it's my fault? That the fact there's no record. It's not my fault. Listen, I mean, we've said it before. Yahoo used to be really hard to work with. I can't help it if a whole season got erased. I don't know what happened. I might have been so mad that Craig won that I hit the delete button. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm Detonator's Tonto Bowl 6 champ. And I will say with confidence that the West is the best. We well, do not have to go to that side of the state uh, next year, which is, that's the bright side. The, the only bright side. Really. The only bright side. And, ah, gag, but, Mr. Bright Side. Yeah, if I had my druthers, I would definitely go to Gag's place. Your druthers. Uh, yeah, I'd rather go to, to Gag's place than Craig's if I had to choose. Craig's not, what, you mean Craig's apartment? No, like, w w Wimber? Wimber, him, like, defending the title. Well, maybe we won't have to. Maybe we won't. Tree size this place. Yeah. And it's his choice. He can choose wherever he wants to go. Exactly. So He might throw us a curveball and say, you know, he wants to go. I don't know. Where would he choose? Maybe it's downtown Johnstown. I don't know. Down, maybe, the, maybe at the comic book store. <laughs> the comic book store? Dude, uh, man, that'd be really distracting. I don't, think I, could, I don't want to do that. Maybe yeah. Jimmy Huber would be really distracted, too. He'd be Huber. talking about, like, the collectibles Huber. and stuff. Like, ooh, the new Deadpool. I know. That'd be worse than... Giant boobs. Gi giant boobs? Yeah. Like, that'd be worse for oh. Jimmy than giant boobs. That's true. True. But, yeah. I mean, everybody loves giant boobs. <laughs> I was just thinking about it a second ago before, before you said it. I, I, was thinking about, I think about giant boobs every giant, day. Giant boobs, not I mean, uh, not giant. Well, I mean, not like double Ds. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, like Ds or Cs. Maybe right. Just we're D. on the same page. So the same page? Yeah. Like, yeah. not double Ds. No. Maybe once. <laughs> all right well let's move on we've got we've got a lot to get to tonight and uh, uh we're only about five minutes into the intro so let's cut our losses right now all right they're cut snip snip unfinished business and finished business 
All right. Uh, in our segment of unfinished business today, uh, you would think, why would I have unfinished business, Brian? I mean, the season's pretty much over. There's nothing that can affect me yeah, in any way, yeah, shape, or form. Exactly. But I am still disturbed from last week. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay, I'm ready. I feel like you're attacking me. I'm ready. I'm attacking the whole league. Okay. Brian. Yes. Name me. Oh, no. Are we name... going back to Dan Marino? We might be. <laughs> But that's not, it's not even Dan Marino right now. Name me, name me, name me a player from the 1998 Falcons. Ooh, um, crap. What's the running back's name? The incredible running back. I used, to, I used to love him. I won't help you at all on this one. Uh, you're going to let me struggle. I am going to let you struggle. It's, um, it's to prove a point. I'm going to remember as soon as we're done because I used to play against... My cousin in like this old Madden game, and he used to always take Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Vick on Atlanta then? Nope. Okay. I, mean, yeah, I bet you could even name the quarterback. Yeah. All right, I give up. I don't know. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. All right, that's the point. I know who you're trying. To, you're thinking of Jamal, Jamal Anderson. Yeah. But that's the point. You couldn't name it. Name me somebody from the 2006 Chicago Bears besides Rex Grossman. <laughs> I didn't expect to be put on the spot here. I feel like Kabisco would be really good at this. Um, let's see here. Who would have been the running back in 2006? I don't know. Just get on with it. Exactly. I, I, so, where, I mean, where, can where you, are you going with this? Can you name this? any other of the Bears, though? Not off the top of my head. And I'm feeling a little under weather. So. No, I don't even make that excuse. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you just, ate, you just ate an orange. So, you got your dose of vitamin C. Your brain is working. All right. So you couldn't name a player from those two teams. Okay. So do you know what they both those teams have in common? I assume that they maybe won a championship or something. No. I don't know. What? It's the exact opposite. They lost the championship. Uh, they were in the Super Bowl. They lost. Wow. So, uh, okay. Now, name me some members of the 1990s Buffalo Bills. Oh, I, I can do that. Do it. Name him. Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly, um, Who's the Andre Reed. And there's another one. Um, J Kenny Lo James Lofton. Kenny Lofton. James Lofton, right, right. Um, what about, uh, what about uh, Don Beebe? Yeah, Don Beebe. What about Steve Tasker? Steve, uh, I kind of remember the him. Special teams ace? Yeah. What about the defensive line guy, Bruce? Smith. Smith, Yeah. right. Okay, what about, what about the kicker? I don't Come remember. Come on, you missed the kick. You missed the kick. I don't remember. Scott? Scott? Norwood? Okay. How do you not remember that? Like, here's the point, though. You remembered all those players. Yeah. You know why? Because they made it to four Super Bowls. Exactly. Yeah. They're a dynasty. <laughs> they made it to how many Super Bowls? Four. And how many did they make it to in a row, Brian? Four. They made it to four straight Super Bowls. You, can you name me another team that's done that? What, lost four Super Bowls? No, made it to four straight Super Bowls. Straight. No, but just like Gags pointed out, the definition, pretty much the agreed upon in the sports community. Hold on, let me finish. The agreed upon definition in the sports world is four championships, and I think he says seven years or something like that. But I would even make it like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. But and that's pretty much agreed upon. I mean, agreed. I'm not making this in up. History in the history, like if you watch videos, they have a video of top ten dynasties in the NFL. Number eight is the Buffalo Bills, and they even said. Sure, the definition of a dynasty is you have to win championships, but this team was so good they made it to four <laughs> straight Super Bowls. People did not want them to – sure, it was kind of like a joke when they got there because something always happened. Yeah. Like that kick with Scott Nord was 47 yards long. It wasn't a gimme. Yeah. So people don't point that one out. He said, but if he, if he makes that kick, who knows? They might have won three straight Super Bowls. But the point is they made four Super Bowls. So they, they were a dynasty. So I don't some care what you guys say. Buffalo Bills were a dynasty. The fans love them. There's a 30 for 30 on them called The Four Falls of Buffalo. Watch it. You'll agree with me. End of story. Next unfinished business. Uh, oh, you're just, gonna, you're just going to move straight, for, Wait, straight through that. Well, yeah, your point is that they didn't win a team. That's all you got. But you couldn't rename me the, the names of any of the 1998 Falcons, any of the 2006 Chicago Bears. They were the championships. They didn't win. People don't remember the losers, but everybody remembers the Buffalo Bills. The, yeah, they are one of the greatest losers. One of the greatest dynasties ever <sighs> in sports. Top 10 dynasties in the NFL. What, on? did you see that on some st stupid top 10 list? 
I read about it. Where? On NFL.com. Okay. I'll look it up. I mean, I don't, it's not going to change my personal opinion. I think that's just like, say, it's just like a runner up. It's like, you know. It was just a weird thing for Buffalo. Like, literally, the halftime show or whatever, the, I forget the band was, they moved Thurman Thomas's helmet and he missed a key series. And that was just like a weird thing. That's the reason, one of the reasons they lost another Super Bowl. Because he wasn't in there for a key series. That's a horrible excuse. No, it's not. The dude lost his helmet, man. A stupid band member moved it. The band? The band. They moved, the, like the crew moved his helmet to get out of the way. There are no bands in pro Half, football. Yeah, Super Bowl halftime stuff. Oh. So and then, he came out, his helmet was missing. <laughs> so well, that's not the point. That's My point ridiculous. is that people, you can't remember the team's just because names. Our household, the hey, just because they're household names doesn't make them a dynasty. No, it does make them a dynasty. These people are all Hall of Famers. Uh, we are going to bring this up at the next Thanksgiving podcast and get everybody's input. I, I, wanna, I bring it up I the next wanna, draft. Notes, everything. I, I, look, I, I'm, all, I'm all on Twitter. I'm like, throwing things around, banging stuff. <laughs> Calm down, darling. Calm down. <laughs> I, I love that you went and did some research, though. Yeah, man, because I feel very strongly that they are a dynasty. Steelers, are, you got people call Steelers of the 70s a dynasty. They went to two Super Bowls, then had a period where they don't go to place, then another two Super Bowls, but there was like four years or something between where they didn't go. Still a dynasty. But they were four Super Bowls. And they won them. Yeah, they won them. But the Buffalo Bills were four straight. That's what I'm saying. They were four straight Super Bowls. You know how hard it is to make back-to-back Super Bowls all of them four? <laughs> I don't care if you lose them. You made it to four of them. So that's my point on that one. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> all right. All right, and another thing, Brian. You said... Dan Marino wasn't in the top 10 quarterbacks of all time. You literally put that's like my Aaron personal, That's my personal opinion. Personal opinion. Yeah. And I think your personal opinion is shit. No, that's fair. No, because, yeah, it is fair. Listen, Dan Marino is one of the best uh, top three quarterbacks in the NFL ever. This guy had 420 touchdowns. You just like, like those, you like the losing players. I, I think it's great. <laughs> it's not about it's an individual achievements. Okay. When it's talking about greatest players. Okay. So, man had 420 touchdowns. That record stood forever. Brett Favre, one of the greatest, had took it. He's the one that broke it, right? Yeah. So the man had, you know, if we're doing like fantasy, he had 4,967 completions. That's those points. Started 240 games. Had 61,361 yards thrown, okay? Sure, he had 252 interceptions, but have you seen how many Brett Favre has? Ridiculous. Also, QB rate, 86.4. Uh, he, he was the 1984 MVP, I believe. Took his team to the Super Bowl his rookie year with nobody. How could you not say that he's one of the best ever? He's, he's very good. Very good. Yeah. He holds multiple records. He's a nine-time Pro Bowler. I mean, he's t- top ten. Oh, now you're going to go top I did. ten. I, said top, top I did say top ten, but you I said... You won't give me top five. No, not top five. I think you're out of your mind. I'm not talking of all time. I'm not saying like it's de- it's over right now. Like there are current players who will surpass him in terms of like skill and possibly achievements. I put Dan Marino's arm up against any any quarterback's arm that you would throw in any day of the week in their primes. I would put Dan Marino and I would bet my house on it. Oh, so would you draft him number one overall all time quarterbacks? I would. I would definitely. That'd be, that'd be fun. It would be. I would definitely take him. I would. I would trade. I would jump over people to get the Dan Marino number one overall. And you know, you might have some. You might have a point there in terms of like fantasy quarterbacks, but not necessarily reality quarterbacks. <laughs> no, my fantasy reality. I think they coincide for me as far as the best quarterbacks of all time. Because, I mean, you might be able to say like receivers, who that's like garbage time and stuff. But even in garbage time, the quarterbacks the one throwing like the eighty yard bomb to complete it. Dan Marino is the man. He was the man. He is the man. He always will be the man. <laughs> I'm glad you feel so passionately about that. But I mean, I'll I'll, I'll throw this at you. Like, I, I I would argue that I think Tom Brady's better in terms of being clutch, being a leader, and getting the, getting the job done. Doesn't matter who he's throwing the ball to, he gets the job done. You know, and I hate the Patriots, but how many titles does he have now? I don't know what three, four, like four. Yeah, and I can argue with you there. Listen. Tom Brady's always had players surrounded him. He has had Randy Moss. Now he's got Gronkowski. Uh, he's had uh, Corey Dillon. Uh, 
who's that? What's that? Uh, <laughs> not Antonio Brown. Uh, who's number eighty or something like that? The guy who always Tony Brown. Something he played every freaking position. My point. Is, Brady always had, he had Teddy Bruschi. He had a great defense. He's always had people surrounding him. Marino has never had anybody. He's had Mark Duper and Mark Clayton. And that's it. And how many Super Bowls did he make it to? One. His rookie year with nobody. And that proves how hard it is to get back, which also proves that the Buffalo Bills are a dynasty. Oh, my God. Are you done? I'm done. I just feel like I'm very, I feel very strongly. I think you're wrong. I really do. And I think anybody in the league that disagrees with me is wrong as well. <laughs> I really do. And it's, I would argue this to, the ne- to, the, to our next lifetime. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to go. I didn't know we were do- you were doing re- research during the four days that we've had in between, which I have to say I'm impressed. I felt very strongly about it. And I, and I like, sure, Brady's clutch, but, I mean, if you're going to argue about, like, clutch quarterbacks. Oh, man, like, that's a huge part of being, like, the greatest one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Well, If you can't do it under pressure, money. what can you do? For my money. What? Marino could do it under pressure. He just had shitty players. They just couldn't catch. Or no, he couldn't get, he get sacked and stuff like that. He even ran a lot. But no, the most clutch, number one quarterback for me all time is Joe Montana. And also, the fact that you say Steve Young is abysmal. It's an abysmal claim. Yeah, he's a three-time Super Bowl champion. I retract. Two, two of them were on the sidelines watching Joe Montana. And the only reason he won the Super Bowl is because he had Joe Montana's team. He had Jerry Rice. James John James Taylor? Yeah. Roger Craig. Uh gosh, the, John uh, Taylor. John Taylor. Okay. Tom Not James Taylor. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Sweet Carolina. Tom Rathman. Uh in a tight end that I can't remember at the time. And one of the greatest safeties that isn't in the Hall of Fame, Tom Mer- Mer- Merlin Hanks or Merton Hanks or something like that. All right. Hey, calm one down. One of the greatest I, defenses ever. I retract the Steve Young statement. It was the first quarterback that came to my head. I said, oh, so you're just throwing, just throwing quarterbacks out. You should retract. Steve Young was an all right quarterback. He wasn't great. If he was a great quarterback, he would have taken Tampa Bay to the playoffs. All right, he's, he's below Dan Marino. He's probably in the top 25, something like that. Okay, top 25. All, it's only, you just, because you just confused because all I ever show Steve Young is that one highlight where he runs like 70 yards against the, the Vikings and gets his helmet knocked off. He goes for a touchdown. You know what? He probably suffered a seizing ending concussion right there. So don't just don't give me that crap. You're like Rain Man right now. I, 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 hey man, these are childhood memories, and they stand up to the test of time. Hey, I used to love the Dolphins. I had a Dolphin starter jacket. Okay, I'm not hating on Dolphins or Dan Marino. I was a fan. You're a fan, but I still don't think he's like one of the greatest of all time. I think you're out of your mind. I think you're crazy. I mean. May- Boomer size is probably better. Whoa. I just Whoa, you're just starting some now. <laughs> Boomer size is one of the biggest dicks in the world. I hate that guy. I just want to see a reaction. I hate that man with a passion. Guy's got no good opinions. Boom. Always, always hates the Steelers. No matter what. He'd probably say that game against the Broncos last week was a fluke. Oh, he's such a... Uh, I'm cutting you off. You should cut me off. I could go out. Oh, I'm getting worked up. I'm Get this Boomer. man some Valium. Yeah, that's a guy that... Didn't ever won a Super Bowl, and they're going to tell him he's a good one. Give me a break. All right. Um, and I'm not doing this because you're already fired up. I'm just going to do it just because it needs to be said. Um, Delling might be really fired up because he's out of all the playoffs that matter. <laughs> no, we, I'm not, hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I got it. I got it. Knocked him out of our playoffs. I made it to the championship. He Game ba- of your he, life. He basically, I beat him twice in a row. I mean, it reminds me of the time we went to Europe, and every time we bet on <laughs> soccer, I beat him. I mean, that guy, he could not get one game right, including the <laughs> final, including the World Cup final. Uh, one of the worst strings of Delling's luck ever. It's because I was out of the country. Every, t- every bet I made with him, I lost. It wasn't even just <laughs> soccer. It was other things. I was like, I bet, I bet that rock is going to move faster than that. That other rock, and it would, and you would win. I don't know what it was. It was just, it was a weird thing. You owned Sweden and in, in Italy and all that place. I could not win for life. Me, I did not like. It was definitely something about not being on my home soil. Maybe, but uh, we were on the home soil this past two weeks, and he lost two times in a row. He could have beat me if he would have played Cam Newton. Um, who else? Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Stefan Diggs, maybe. Uh, uh, I can't. A bunch of different players. Yeah, he had a gags complex. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have too many great receivers on my team right now, and that's the problem. And it's like, who do you start when you have like seven or eight great receivers? And Alshon Jeffrey, same here. Freaking I, gets out in the third quarter. I didn't even know. I would never play that guy. Should and a Brandon Cook. Uh, I got the same problem, man. I got Amari Cooper on the bench. You know, I got I, I got Julian Edelman. He's hurt. 
You traded for a Tenu Brown. You bought the championship. <laughs> Whatever. I didn't win it yet. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to take up too much time, but that's just kind of explaining why Delling might be the way he is right now. You forgot to say that I'm also uh, 11-3-1 and one in my sister's league. Uh, I'm going for first, pri- first prize there, and that's the big money league. Um, big comeback, down 30 points, but I had Drew Brees and Ben Watson, and I won by six. So uh, suck it to the league that I don't know. Uh, so funny. <laughs> but also, uh, yeah. He has I, to bring up leagues that no one knows about. Hey, man. I, Craig knows about this. He helped me once. Draft. So because I couldn't do it. Uh, but no, uh, my hat, even though I, I am complaining, my hat's off to you. You beat me twice. Thank you, sir. Uh, good job. It'll be all for naught if you win a championship. Or if you don't win a championship, yeah. actually. I'm still in the third place, so it still matters. I might, you know, I'll get the money back, or I don't even think I paid the money for the league. I, I still, I'm still in debate with this about Ben. Ben tells me I paid, I tell him I didn't, and he still won't take my money. So wow, you're trying to overpay. I, I think I am because I can't remember. It's pretty sad because I'm usually on top of those things. Uh, I will say that I won't feel good about the championship game because the guy I'm going up against has uh, Beckham Jr. and as of now he's not playing, so I will feel kind of crappy if I win it and. OD, ODJ's on the on the bench. OBJ's on the bench. Dude, there's one thing you have to learn, Brian, is you never feel like crap about winning a championship. That's ODB's fault. He's a little bitch. You can't... Yeah, who cares? Craig, so Craig would laugh. Yeah, Craig would laugh. He'd be like, sorry, man. You're the one that drafted him. He's your... You know, you should learn these things. I can't help that ODB gets mad when somebody put, gets in his face. You can't be like... Do you think he deserves that suspension? Oh, my God. 100%, yes. I don't. You, did you see the play where he, like, got... Smacked him upside the head, yeah. No, he... Targeted his head with his helmet. No, I thought, like, it, was, I thought just, it was like the punch. No, no, literally, like there was a scene right on a sideline. They do like a he goes to go, but uh, I guess like Car- Carolina. No, uh, the Giants ran a Giants running play, team. and at that time, like uh, so Beckham goes out, and Josh Norman kind of like does like a side swipe of him because he sees the runner and he like, kind of like throws him, and then he goes in and starts. He's standing there and he's like waiting for the tackle sort of thing. Like that's where the runner is. ODB comes back around, and he goes full speed and dives. With his helmet right into the side of Josh Norman's head, wow. and like takes it out. Okay, like, I didn't. I didn't see that. Wow. I like, didn't see that play. I thought it was like the punch of the helmet. No, no. There's other things. And as you know, on my uh, on my team uh, since week one, I've had I hate Beckham yeah. as my trash talk because yeah. I do. I don't like the guy. I know he's made like a couple of great catches, but honestly, I don't think he's a good receiver when he plays against good cornerbacks. Revis, Norman, uh, Sherman, all those guys can hold him in check. And oh, yeah. if he goes against like other lesser people, yeah, he might. But most of sometimes it's in garbage time. So I don't think Beckham is that good of a receiver. I honestly do. I, I don't place him in the top ten. I know stat wise yeah. he is, but top ten I don't. And look what Antonio Brown did this week. I mean, he made the Broncos look bad. He embarrassed them. You know that guy, that cornerback, hadn't let up a touchdown in two years. Yeah, and then he had two scored on him. Right. You know the yeah. game winner against him, and then the earlier one. I like mean, Brown is insane. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, Antonio Brown play. But I've also seen him play live. Like, I've been at the game, like, three or four times. And just watching him, like, plays where he's not even getting the ball, he's pretty amazing. I, I, I agree. Uh, I would say uh, he is the best receiver in football. Right now. Yeah. I, right now. And I think, like, maybe Julio Jones is second. But he does a lot of things that a lot of people don't do. And he's a joy to watch. And I am so glad to have him on the Steelers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's with Ben Roethlisberger. They're, they, he's, they're actually getting comparisons to uh, Joe Montana Rice I Connection. I heard that. I heard that. Do you think Antonio Brown goes number one overall next year? In our draft? Ooh, that's a tough one. I was actually thinking about that. Uh, it's a couple it's very ago. possible. It's, it's very possible. Um, gosh, that's what I was... So, well, I guess one I was gonna, we could talk about later on, but I was going to say with uh, Craig, uh, if Craig wins the championship, do we get... Does it, is it like when the Golden State Warriors won the championship last year and everybody's trying to go small ball? Does everybody go the wide receiver heavy uh, thing that he did this year? Um, no, I don't think they do. I don't think so? Okay, well... But I still think he goes top three. Top five I get, at least. I would say he's probably number one receiver taken overall, oh, or yeah. it's either him or Julio Jones. Yeah. Um, but uh, boy, having Le'Veon Bell back in there, I mean, sure he's been injured twice, but so what? I mean, it's still the thing is like Antonio Brown is these past past two years, his stats have skyrocketed because Le'Veon Bell's not in there. Like, I mean, he's yeah, I'm sure he'll get a hundred catches either way, but they have to focus. They go to Antonio Brown a lot without Le'Veon Bell in there, so. I don't know what it is if he's in there with a with a uh, yeah, with full season. I mean, have to look at stats as yeah. far as like when Le'Veon Bell plays and when he doesn't. That's a good point. And Bell gets more catches too. He does. He does. And I mean, you, you know, you're a team owner. What's the? Uh, I mean, what are you going to decide? Do you want? 
a running back that catches a lot of passes? Like, like a Forte that could get like 90 passes as well? Or do you want like a Joel Charles? That's the thing I'd have, a dis- I'd have trouble with because, you know, if you let one of those running backs go by and uh, you get the receiver and coming back that second round, pfft, I mean, there's not even going to be a good running back at all. The thing about it, though, is running backs go down so, so much more often than receivers. They do, but it's still hard like when the receiver gets hurt to replace yeah. them as well. So, yeah. I mean, and from we've watched Craig this year replace his running backs. He just waits on the waiver wire, and he got like Charkandrick West. So, I mean, he true. he can wait to do that. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what we'll I'm going to do. We'll save this for the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. This is your episode or section, your your uh, your little dalliance into Venus talking. And uh, for this week, I, I wanted to get a little uh, a little introspective, a little little heartfelt here, pensive, if you will. Uh, you know, as the year goes on each year. I look at this every single year as I'm tossing in 40 bucks to have an entire football season's worth of entertainment. And I have a hell of a time every single year. And it's all because of the guys in the league. I love the trash talking. I love the competition. I like the intrigue. You know, everything about playing fantasy football with you guys, I absolutely love. And it's because of the personalities in our league. You're not going to see that anywhere else. And uh, it's just I think it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, one thing I can say, while we all disagree on many different things, I do firmly believe that 91.6% of our league is fully in agreement that we do not want Craig to win this week. Uh, we are all behind Tree Size. Everyone but Craig is behind Tree Size to win this championship. Uh, nobody wants to see Craig with four titles, and everybody wants to see Therese Ice win this. So I will simply end this by saying, Therese Ice, I could have been beaten by a better man. Uh, I am fully rooting for you. I want to see you win this thing. Take down the championship. Gags, I'm going against you for third place. But really, even more than third place to me is seeing Tree win that championship. So, Tree Size, good luck this week. Everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Spend some time with your loved ones. And, uh, yeah, you guys just have a good night. That was a much different tone from being, and it kind of reminded me of the uh, commissioner, you know, whenever he used to call in every week talking about how great the league was, how great everybody is. So, you know, I'll say it. I can see I can see Bean running for commissioner someday. Oh, I think that might be a nightmare scenario for me, actually. Really, I think he would do a great job. Uh, Keep Craig in check, you know. I'm not nominating by any chance, by any means, but I could see one day. I think everyone, like the original people from this league, will probably have their turn in being commissioner for one reason or another. I mean, be some very lengthy debates. If Bean was the commissioner between the commissioner and the assistant to the commissioner. Yeah. He'd be progressive. There'd <laughs> be a lot of voting. Yeah. Um, I'd be putting a, just I'd be like just throwing another thing on a, a Bean's plate. I mean, he's a father, a yeah. uh, director of old people um, at the old folks home or something. I don't know what it's called, like entertainment for the old folks. Is that, like a, is that a play? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> that's not a play. No, that's a, I think it's his actual job. So I mean, he does something. But he would direct old people if they were in a play too, wouldn't he? He would. He's yeah. a director, a playwright, yeah. uh, an author, a singer, uh, an actor. Um, did I say father? He's a father. Uh, a personal friend of mine. He's a true renaissance man. <laughs> he's a true renaissance man. If you were, if you were like, uh, like the king or something, he'd be like your jester, uh, <laughs> and like a bunch of other things. Yeah. Your cook. He'd do like all the things. Be a be a pretty sad uh, castle kingdom if you had one man doing everything. But I feel like Bean would be running around with a like, chicken his head cut off. The man, wear, the man wears many hats. Yeah. That's what we say. But to put like the commissioner on him, that might be a lot for him to handle. Yeah, you think that would be it? That would be too much. That might, that might push him over the yeah, edge. Because as we all know, sometimes fantasy football, everybody knows this, takes up a little bit more time than you ever want it to. So if you're in charge of it, then it takes up even more time. And I think maybe that's what happened with Jimmy. He just kind of like, ah, I got a wedding. I can't do anything. So he like went from like... All in to like couldn't do anything, you know. 
It's pretty true. Like that's, that's what happened to me. I just stopped. I was like, it's too much. I'm just going to stop doing things. So, and then when people were asking for me the things, I just, all right, I'll like do a real quick thing. But I did not put in that effort. In. Yeah, I phoned it in pretty much. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of things. Uh, I don't know if Bean would want it, but I mean, if he threw that, if he threw his hat in the ring, I'd listen to his yeah. uh, his case for him. But he, he might be my personal. He might be like the Donald Trump of our league. You are the Donald Trump of our league. I am not the Donald Trump of our league. <laughs> Consider myself more of a uh, Rand Paul. <laughs> Whatever. You did have his hair back in the day. Donald Trump? No. Rand. Oh. Like, kind of curly, you know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, jeez. No, no. 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 Yeah, oh, try, oof, I missed that hair. Ah. All right, let's get back to the call. What did you think wait, of wait, wait, wait. I was thinking something at work today uh, about hair. I was like, would I rather be a guy with a, had a nice head of hair but a douchebag or a bald guy who's really nice and cool? And I chose nice and cool, you bald guy. Good, because that's what you are. Damn right. <laughs> That was quick. See, there you go. Yep. All right, All right. moving on. Uh, moving on to Bean's actual call. I kind of sidetracked us there. He's absolutely right that 91.6 or whatever percent is fully behind, hopefully fully behind True Size. And I know that uh, Jay Huber will appreciate the specific of the percentage. I'm sure he pulled out his iPhone calculator like Delling's about to do. He's <laughs> going to check the math. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> you know, nobody wants to see Craig like get... That separation, you know, a two game, two championship separation. Yeah, it's actually eighty three point three 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 percent. What eleven out of twelve? No, I did ten out of twelve because because uh, uh, you know we're rooting for tree. He doesn't count. He can root for himself. That's not what he's saying. All right, all right, all right. Tree. <laughs> so you're gonna call being out on his mouth. Yeah, it's the, tree size is a single entity. <laughs> Cannot be used in the equation. Go on. You are very technical today. Yeah, and, I, and like the research is kind of scaring me. You, well, do, you yeah. usually don't show this initiative. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm turning over a new leaf for 2016. It's scary. Well, I mean, come on, we gotta do research. <laughs> we gotta do facts. Got a fact check. Know, Craig's gonna be like, it's not 91 point blah blah percent. It's 83.333 because because Tree Side can't root for himself. That's true. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to his call. Yes, I agree with what he's saying. This is the greatest league, and not just because I'm in it, but because I'm in other leagues. I've played other leagues, other fun leagues, but this is the best league. It's most competitive, best smack talk. Some people say it's not. I think it is, and uh, it is the best 40 bucks you're going to spend. And I like that it doesn't go up every year, because I know a lot of other leagues keep going up and up and up. It's not about the money. You know, the little chunk of change is nice, but it's all about the uh, glory. I agree. It is about the glory. It's about the money. I mean, it's not about the money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it is bunch best bunch of guys. Hey, I hate you all, and I love you all. And there's certain little things like if I was to do like little note cards about each each one of you guys that I could have like pros and cons. Yeah. And some might outweigh more cons than pros, but the pros stand as well. Uh, I've been doing it for 13 years. Uh, and that's the longest league I've ever been into. The fact that we can actually depend on a large amount of people to stay in the league is awesome. Yeah. And. Uh, and that the fact that there are other people that aren't in the league that would not mind coming back to it. So uh, that, that speaks for itself. Um, yeah, and I look forward to the draft every year. I felt like this year was kind of fast. felt like Josh was kind of in and out. Didn't really yeah. participate as yeah. much. Yeah. He was uh, late. Yeah, he was late, but then he was like, he was like oh, so just pick the last round for me and just ran out the door. Yeah, what's so, up with that? Yeah, I know, right, man? Like, like he has a baby or something. Yeah. Jeez. But, uh, no excuses. No excuses. That's right. Find a babysitter. He had Crystal's parents there. He had, oh. the, he had the in-laws there. Wait, you couldn't sit around and have a beer with us? I know. Jeez. But no, I agree. I, uh, yeah, I love the league. I love the guys. Um, who, who, like, who would you date? Out of all the guys? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just putting you on the spot. Clearly he has an answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, clearly. Uh, wow. It's a tough one. Mine's Jimmy. You're just Jimmy? Yeah. Tall, dark, handsome. Never got yeah, he's got a great, dark, great smile. A dark thing. Tall. I was just thinking about this the other day, too, actually. It's kind of so weird. You think way girls too much. Like, well, I got nothing else to do at work. But uh, girls are like, I want a tall, dark, handsome man. What does dark mean? Well, I mean, like, like a mean, black guy? No. Nah. Like a, a guy from Sicily? Uh, like, you know, you could be like an Indian. What is specific dark? Is it really? Because I don't do like, if you say dark hands, I don't, if you're referring to the hair and the eyebrows and the eyes and stuff. I don't think you should say it like that. Maybe they are talking like dark skin. 
Is there anything yeah, wrong with that? Thing. It goes all around. Like it's uh, off. It's, I, I kind of think, think it's off the cuff. Yeah. Have you ever heard a girl say, "I'd just love to date a man who's real pasty"? <laughs> She's got a point. You don't want to date like a ghost, like Ryan Foy. You know. Ooh, we call him Ryan he, Foy. Out. He's pasty. He's got like a little splotchiness to him. He's, he's got like the red hair, like, and, like the. I mean, he's got like some freckles. It's the jeans, man. It's the jeans. Yeah, <laughs> it's the jeans. <laughs> I guess. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's well known that red red haired men have a harder time to uh, finding women, but Foy has done it. <laughs> have you done that research, done research? as well? <laughs> done my got my Excel sheets right over here. Uh, I think when they mean dark, I think they mean like Italian. Oh, see now you're calling Italian. That's what I'm saying. It could yeah. be Italian. Yeah, yeah. It could be a black guy. It could be. Could be uh, an Indian. It could be a Hispanic who's got a really good tan. You know, it could be a guy with a really good tan. That's true. So that's true. Yeah. So, but no, but like, yeah, a guy is a guy isn't gonna go. You know, I really want to dark date a girl that's tall, dark, and handsome, or be- beautiful. Tall, dark, and beautiful. Oh, maybe like t- maybe like tan. Oh, tan. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't go. I want to date a white girl either. Like, where are all the white women at? So you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, this is oh, a t- okay, okay, okay. If I had a date, pick somebody to date out of everybody. <laughs> Justin Moore. Why? Uh, cause cuddly, very cuddly, very witty. Uh, it's true. Is he- I mean, we kiss each other, so it's good. <laughs> Whoa! What? Well, yeah, he kisses a lot of people. Exactly. So I mean, I've been, I've, I've known the man, I've known the family. They would love to have me as uh, into the family. <laughs> they all thought it was gonna be me and Vince or Vince and I. Uh, like the one, like when we used to, well, even Justin, we were, Justin, we used to all watch Gilmore Girls together. We went to the opening of Bed Bath and Beyond. This is a gr- uh, this is a great insight. Yeah, so I mean, sure, like out of all the people, dude, I think Justin would be the best, one of the best guys ever. I can't argue with that. And, and he'll cook you dinner. Have you ever, or anything? He'll cook you dinner. Yeah. Have you ever had one of those? I asked him. I said, I want an egg sandwich. You know what he did? He did one of those things from uh, what are they called? Is an English egg sandwich where you cut the cut the hole in the middle yeah, of the bread? Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. It was. I mean, that was to die for. Wow, and I was like, "That's it." It was like within like two minutes less. So, imagine having that every day. If you wouldn't have it. You wouldn't have day. it every day. Well, the ability to have it. <laughs> I mean, and he would also bring you food home from Rizzo's. That's just like everybody thinks. Like, oh, you were married to a massage therapist. That must be heaven. No, it's not. Like, you know, it's, oh, watch your toes. She's right here. Watch it's your toe. it's great. But you don't get massages every night like everybody kind of thinks they do. You know, I, I give her massages too. Like, you know, it's fifty fifty. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're great massages, and I'm not I'm not backpedaling. They are great massages. Does she not make you good meals? But does she not make you like unbelievable meals? Uh, but I'm, I'm just treats. talking. I, she does, but I'm just talking. I'm not talking about all the package. Like kickboxing and like all these other things that stay in shape for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Then what but, are you going with? What are you trying to say? It, it's like you know, she's like you're stylish, saying she's artsy. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> you love painting me into a corner. I mean. You're the one that starts these things. Like you should never <laughs> ever bring that up about your wife. Here's the thing, I'm talking about like how you just said. You know, if you're married to a, like Justin Pork, the cook, you're gonna get egg sandwich, amazing egg sandwiches every day. No, you're not. It's a myth. You you know, it's a possibility. Just like she gives amazing massages. However, you might get one once a month, once every two months, but it's still great. I sound really unappreciative. <laughs> yeah, now it's gonna be once every year. You just screwed yourself. You screwed the pooch. Uh, right? uh, Merry Christmas to me. Yeah. Okay, and also, okay, yeah, it's the only thing, Justin would have to stop smoking, though. That was my, uh, my yeah, one thing. Yeah, yeah. So. Is that a deal breaker? Uh, I mean, it might be a deal breaker. <laughs> you know, you would not know that this is like the Tonto Bull podcast if you listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I mean. You can tell that we are not in it. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously. But uh, yeah, Justin, you asked me a question. Justin's a great man. I mean, even as now I'm seeing this picture of you posing half naked in front of like an ice sculpture that I took myself, which is kind of weird, but uh, I still would not date you in the league. That's fine. Only because you would not appreciate me and all the things I do for you. I wouldn't date you either, so it's mutual. (laughs) You're too needy. Oh, wow. I'm not needy at all. Look at you. You're you're already sounding needy, you know? It's like, uh, I'm not needy. You're questioning me. (laughs) I have been single for like five years. That's not needy. If I was that, I would have just went out and dated the first ugly person I could find. Just calling me ugly? No, I'm saying they're not needy. <laughs> and you, you give me, give me some reasons why you date Jimmy. I mean, you said, "Oh, I'll date Jimmy because he's tall, dark, and handsome." Great, okay. great smile, great sense of humor. You know, loves movies. So do I. Um, you know what? All you're gonna do is sit on the couch all day and get fat. <laughs> 
Really? Mm -hmm. Jimmy, he's a workout machine. Jimmy was fat before. <laughs> Say that again? So Jimmy was fat before. He was never he fat. Was. Dude, Jimmy will tell you, he had like 20 to 30 excess pounds on himself. He was, he was not fat. married to Angie. He was not fat. He was. He was. Wow. You've I, got a warped sense of fat. I do not have a warped sense of fat. Because you can clearly see from when he went to college in Savannah, his chiseled jawline. And then when I first meet this guy, you know, he doesn't have a jawline. And then now, the next this year I saw him at the draft, he had his jawline back. So you tell me, do the math right there. He lost some weight, he got his jawline back, he got a good looking girl. He's happy. So I'm not saying he's not happy, but he is not fat. I can't wait till he sees you again. He's not fat right now. Oh, all right, he was never fat. You are out of your, you are wrong. You're wrong. Buffalo Bills <laughs> dynasty. Jimmy is it was never fat, period. I think Jimmy will argue with you. I think Jimmy will say, you know what? Debt was right. He just needed This is why you are the Trump of our league. <laughs> he would say debt should debt need to tell me this. He says, I need to hear it from somebody else. I had some weight I need to lose. I should have started running before. I'm cutting this. So yeah, I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I got one more before you cut it. I am like Donald Trump actually other like I at the debate. You are. Like, all right, all right, hold on, Jeb. No. <laughs> Jeb Bush joking. He probably didn't watch the debate. Yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Okay, good. Low, you're well, low energy. Low energy. <laughs> what I'm saying is, back in the day, what was what was the one meal that we got at his house that he loved, that everybody loved? You talking about the cousin? Talking about the Stromboli over yeah. potato yeah. chips. Yeah. What's your point? I'm talking? That's not healthy. If you're eating that all the time? That's like a special thing. That was one of her specialties. Oh, come on. It was like greasy potato chips. You got your... You are Trump. Bully ...with a ton of bread. Uh, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You always talk about how it was one of the best meals you've ever had. I've only had it once in my life. That's enough. It's an incredible meal. It's once you have every once in a while. Even if you're a fit person, you are allowed to go ahead and eat something that, you know, isn't good for you every once in a while. I like that you said fit out there. At first, it was not one of the most amazing meals I've ever had in my life. I will say it was good. But some of the most amazing meals I've ever had in my life are by far outranked at. First of all, that one meal where you guys took me to that restaurant with the mac and cheese bacon thing that I had. That which I think I, I orgasmed in my own pants while I was eating. That was one of the most amazing meals I've ever had. Okay, this is going absolutely nowhere fast. But all I have to say is, Jimmy was never fat, and I can't wait till he sees you again. Alright, all I have to say, do I still get to say something good? All I have to say is, me and Justin say I love you to each other all the time. This week's matchups. <laughs> I, was, I saw what I did. He went low. I went high. We went high. We went low. I don't know what happened. We both went low. All right. So taking knees out. We're Devonte Burr flicked up the matchup song. Oh, nice one. We we've got the third place matchup, and we're not gonna get too far in depth into this because they're both. Knocked, Brian doesn't want to. No, they're both knocked out of the actual playoffs. Now they're just going for third place. They both have been defeated. So. I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there. If you want to go in depth, you can. A sad um, day indeed. It is. And and we didn't properly bury them yet, which we will. We will. Uh, in due time. Um, just glancing at these lineups, um, I noticed that he has Gurley in the flex. And I who knows? They probably haven't even touched these First lineups. Seattle. How do they touch these lineups? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> um, yes, because Ted Ginn's in there. He didn't have Ginn in last week. That's true. And Craig made a point to say... I, don't know if I, I saw that. Craig's being nice, but I don't. I think it's also like a jab at the same back end. You couldn't. There was nothing you could do. <laughs> Sorry. Like it was like, ha! I would have beat you no matter uh, what. Like like a kick in the balls. You're right. You're right. Yes. And it's true. Especially, I mean, it is, but still, you don't have to tell it. Yeah. Have be some be be honorable. Be like, good yeah. game, man. There's nothing you could have done. Yeah. Don't don't beat yourself up because I did. You know. <laughs> All right. So. Checking out these lineups here. Um, I'm going to give it to Gags. He's got more dynamic lineup from the top to the bottom. So, not going to put any thought into it. I just think he's going to win it. Uh, I'm going to give it to Bean. <laughs> just to be objective. Uh, I also want to say because he had this phone call, I've grown closer with Bean this year. I haven't seen him any, any more than I have any other years. But from yeah. the Bean is talking and just the way, just to hear his opinions. Closer, yeah. I feel like uh, he's really coming around to his own and maturing as a person in the football league world and uh, definitely appreciate his algorithms. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing for me is Gronkowski and... He's, he's classy. He's keeping it classy yeah. in Johnstown. Yeah. Gronkowski, what a beast. And uh, uh, the Carolina D. Like, I just think they're on fire right now. And Matt Stafford versus San Francisco. 
Carolina got stomped last week in terms of their defense. Yeah, but that was against the Giants. The week before when they played Atlanta, they won 38 yeah. to nothing. Well, you can't say they're on fire right now if they just gave up 35 points. I will say they're on fire right now because they're 14-0. and 0. Okay. I will say that they're going to crush the Atlanta Falcons who quit already. So I'm just saying they're not, they're not on fire. Don't say and will not say, Brian. If you give up 35 points, you're no longer on fire. You know, it's like NBA jams. You know, whenever you're on fire, if you keep oh, on God. hitting it. Yeah. If you keep hunting in those threes, you're on fire. But as soon as you miss a three and somebody else, the other team scores, you're not on fire. So they're not on fire. I can't believe you brought up NBA jam. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> it's proven a point. You know as well as I do that there's one spot on that court where you can make a three every time. It's just like in the corner, like, uh, double dribble in the corner, in the corner, yeah. yeah, yeah. And what you always try, to, oh, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> We're trying this, is to, this isn't supposed to be analysis. Bean's gonna win. Sorry, sorry, Rook. We thought we were a tech mobile team, but you're not even gonna make the money. Whatever, Rook's got this. Carolina's not on fire. <laughs> the hype man. This week's matchup of the week, not the week, Brian, of the month, not the month, Brian, the matchup of the year, the championship, Tattoo Bowl 13, the one that we all buy tickets for, $40 stubs, we go, we wait every year for this moment, we try to get here, we bleed, we sweat, we lose wives, girlfriends, our kids don't even know our names. All to make it to this championship, Brian. Tattoo Bowl 13. Taking place in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Right up at the top of scalp level in between Winber and Richland, PA. It's this week, Brian. And the two people are going to be the Springfield Isotopes. Ooh. Yay! Somebody's got to cheer them. Craig Kavisic. And the boss of magic, Ryan Treesice. <laughs> The Green Lantern of Johnstown. They'll be playing against each other, vying for that title. Craig wants number what number four. Treesice wants number one. He wants he wants to come home and put his hat on that trophy every week, every day, every minute of his life. And Craig just wants to put it in the background of that stupid video podcast that he does every week. Let's go. That was beautiful. I try. Delling, I have a couple of words to say before we get started here. This is like the haves versus the have-nots. Tree size, looking for a crumb. This is Tree Size's Lake Placid. This is his miracle on ice. A miracle will happen this weekend. Mark my words. Craig Kabisic is Mike Tyson, but I got bad news for him. Tree size is Buster Douglas, and is he? He is gonna knock him the f out. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Let's get into the lineups. Wow. Okay. I guess from that tone of voice, I'm gonna be introducing the Springfield Isotopes. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> All right. Starting at quarterback, he fell into his lap, courtesy of Kevin Bean. Even though Kevin Bean tells us that. Everybody else is responsible. He re neglects the fact that he gave Alex Smith to Craig Kabisic at quarterback. And quarterback for Possum Magic, the one, the only, Philip Rivers. Found his third team and he found his home with Possum Magic. He's hoping to bring him a title just like he did for me. And Treesice, don't you be afraid to go and buy yourself a trophy after this victory. <laughs> All right. And the wide receivers for Craig Kabisic. A juggernaut, if you will. Julio Jones. The fucking man, Antonio Brown. And, I mean, it had to be cold and calculated, but Golden Tate. It came, he's coming out of nowhere. He's on fire. All the receivers, amazing. And for Tree Sice, starting a wide receiver, you got your Sammy Watkins and Quan Bolden. And the Inman, Danny Inman. Don't tell him. 
Dante. Dante. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I still don't know his name. Okay. <laughs> Neither do I. All right. At the running back positions for Craig Kabisic. This man was on the bench for a good part of the season. And he has a pretty cool name. And he's actually a pretty good running back. Char Kendrick West. Craig is trying to do what I could not. Become the first person to win a championship with Alex with a quarterback and a running back for the same team. And now that he's starting to step up right at the right time. Maybe Bean is right. Maybe he does pull pick these teams built for the playoffs. Ryan Matthews. And for Possum Magic, the muscle hamster. Almost got him 100 yards last week. I predict he gets him a couple touchdowns this week. Doug Martin. And Duke Johnson somehow pulled off more than two yards. He had about 50 yards. He's open for more. Wow. At tight end. Jordan Reed going out of his mind lately. And the one, the only, I already said that, but I'm saying it again, Antonio Gates. <laughs> I think he's the second oldest quarter or tight end in the league. I think he's the oldest tight end in the league. Still getting it done. All right. In the flex position, the only guy that I know that likes to copy Odell Beckham's hairstyle, Jarvis Landry of Miami, the possession receiver. And for Cincinnati, we got A.J. Green going up against Denver. It's going to be tough. Hey, if A.B. can do it, he can too. Ooh. But he doesn't have Big Ben. <laughs> it's got A.J. McCarron. Uh, a kicker. I like it. Graham, the garbage man, Gano. And Hauschka, the greatest name in football. Ooh, debatable. <laughs> and uh, defense. Whoo. Seattle versus St. Louis, man. This defense is starting to get hot. Yeah, man. We got Denver going up against Cincinnati. They're hoping to capitalize with Dalton out of the picture. Oh, man. This is, this is, this is a juggernaut matchup. It this is. is a true championship matchup. It is. Now, I, I will say this based on name recognition outside of Alex Smith. The isotopes have clear name recognition advantage. You know, like, let's start, let's start a quarterback. I'm giving that to Tree. I mean, I'm giving it to Tree as well. Yeah. I mean, no, Alex, no yeah, Alex Smith, but you know what? I think Kabisic is fine with having a game manager. Alex Smith is his game manager. <laughs> you know? I mean, are we going to say, like, Craig is like the whatever 2000 Baltimore Ravens was Trent Dilfer? Okay. I mean, okay. Ah, terrible, but I mean, they still won the Super Bowl, so yeah. maybe Craig can pull it off. That's what he's hoping for. Wide receiver, I think Julio Jones and Antonio Brown alone are better than all three of those easily. I mean, this goes to Craig hands down. Oh my gosh. This, this could be the make or break part of this game. I definitely think so. This is going to be a tough one. I mean, the only thing Tree Size has got to hope for is that Josh Norman versus Julio Jones. Yeah. I mean, and he's got the Carolina. Oh, no, nobody has Carolina. That's what I thought. But that was Bean. But Julio Jones versus Josh Norman. That's what he's got to hope for. And he's got to hope that uh, Steelers run the ball against Baltimore. I'll, like, that's going to yeah. happen. Uh, and Golden, it is. You're right. Those three receivers versus, uh, we don't even know Dontrell or Dante Inman and Bolden. Like, we trying to get the, the fountain of youth. Sammy Watkins? Yeah, yeah. sure, but... Now I think I think Craig is gonna annihilate him with the receivers. As far as the I think so go. too. But you know, it's a good thing that they're, they're uh, going up against the Raiders. They're not the greatest secondary, so neither's Detroit. No, that's true. So like, they, he has okay matchups. You know, right? All right, running back. I'm gonna give this to. Uh, it's actually pretty close, but I'm gonna give it to Tree Size. I think Doug Martin. He could have a big game against Chicago. He has potential to break a 150 yard game with a couple touchdowns. Charcantic West could have a good game as well, but I'm still going to give this to Tree. Really? Yeah. Wow. With Duke Johnson Jr. in there? I'm Your boy? About that, but I'm saying Doug Martin alone could beat both of those, his running backs. All right. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Brian. Right. Uh, Charcantic West going against Cleveland, one of the worst run defenses. Uh, I think he could have a huge game. Uh, Ryan Matthews versus Washington could have a huge game. Uh just not confident with uh, Duke Johnson Jr. in there, man. I uh, give it to Craig. Tight end, Gates versus Reed. Reed's obviously the hot hand right now. Gates was okay last week. Oakland is notoriously bad against tight ends. Well, everybody knows that. And you know what? San Diego, I heard that they're probably the most likely team to go to Los Angeles. Is that right? That is right. They are the uh, most, uh, they're the team that most of the owners are supporting, actually, in favor of them moving there. So if you ask me, 
this might be, you know, an audition, you know? And I think they might be trying to put their best foot forward, take Oakland. Is Oakland out of the playoffs completely? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Pretty much. But, hey, this is a rival, you know? It's a conference game, and I think Rivers is going to be up for it in Oakland's house. I, th- I say that Gates gets a touchdown. I'm giving it to Tree. All right. Uh, yeah, looking at both these, I mean, I know the projections – Say Jordan Reed uh, versus Philly. Hmm. I I think, like you said, Oakland's notorious against tight ends. Yeah. But I kind of I just got like this gut feeling that like Rivers is gonna go to Gates. I think Gates is gonna get like a couple touchdowns. I think like Gates is just gonna. So it's, it's eight twenty five on Thursday. I think he's gonna light it up. Wow, I didn't realize that was on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Reed versus Philly. I think that I think that the Philadelphia game is gonna be the Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson show. And I we said that I, last week, didn't we? Did we? I, I probably did. He, he had a good game, but no, against Philly though, okay. his old team. Uh, like he's gonna be you, fired right. up. He's gonna yeah. want some a couple long touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think is gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Gates actually. So that's I just got a feeling. Okay. Flex. I'm giving this to Landry just because AJ Green's going up against Denver and he doesn't have Dalton. Landry's possession, you know, and he's got a look. Uh, does he? Does he do kick returns or punt returns? I don't, know. I don't know. He runs the ball a lot, though, so he gets some he gets some carries. So I think Landry's going to outperform AJ Green in the in the flex. How about you? Uh even though it's in the flex, I'm going to give it to AJ Green. Oh. Uh, just because I know, like, we don't like. I mean, he's I, he's one he's top five receiver, yeah. right? He should yeah. be. Uh, but I think AJ. I think I'm going to give it to AJ Green. I think even though he goes against Denver, I think you got to throw it to him, man. Yeah, I know Landry will get his points, but I think uh, AJ Green gets a touchdown. All right. And then we got Hauschka and Gano. I call this a draw. I don't know. They're both good kickers. Both going up against pretty decent defenses. There's potential for both of these teams to get a lot of field goals. I go with the garbage man. Picking up yeah. that three-point trash, Brian. Yeah. He had a kick block last week. I don't care. He's but called he the, garbage, the, yeah, man. the garbage man. And he got the game winner as well. There you go. All right. Seattle or Denver. That's a tough one. We got they're both at home, so it's in in Denver. It's in Seattle, St. Louis or Cincinnati. I don't know. This one, that's a really tough call. I'm gonna let you go first on that. <laughs> I, really don't, I really don't know. Don't want to take a step up there, Brian. I got you. I'm stepping up all day. Yeah, sure all you do. Night. All night. All day. Get out of here. You're the one who wants to go to bed by ten once we've already screwed up. Crap. Uh, crap. All right. Yeah. Look at these defenses. They are tough. They're both at home. Denver's coming off a, a ganashing first Pittsburgh, yeah. uh, and they're going to be fired up because they want to they want to get back in that spot. They want to have the the top seed, I guess, number three, I yeah. should say, uh, or number two. Two. Uh, okay. Uh, and Seattle's going against St. Louis at home. You're right, it's tough. I'm going with Seattle because uh, they're just they're just hot right now. They are. I might have to second that. I think that Seattle at home against St. Louis, who hasn't done a whole, whole lot lately. So I'm going to give them the advantage. Um, hold on one second. Deadline. Now it's time to make our final prediction of the year. Ugh, it's a tough one. Give me, give me your gut prediction and your heart prediction. Okay. Well, I guess I usually my gut and my heart go together, but not this time. Yeah. Um, all right. I will actually give you an analytical prediction. All right. Uh, analytically, I pick Craig, just because. Uh, I mean, his team's loaded right now as far as like performers, not like as far as names go, but the performers. And my heart, I want Tree Size to win. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully Tree Size can. <laughs> I hate to say that we have to call it an upset. Tree Size upsets Craig, who's the fifth seed, and Tree Size is the second I seed. Know. It would be an upset based uh, on like. Yeah, but I mean, if anything could happen, it's got to be the Philip Rivers show. Is what I think yeah. it's got to be. Yeah. Uh, he's got to make up those points. So that's what I get. Craig, analytically, tree sets with my heart. Good luck to the both of you, and uh, hopefully you enjoy that trophy in your house. Yeah, I, I'll have to say this: like I didn't realize until now that Christmas Eve is gonna pretty much decide a lot of this matchup because Tree Sets has got three big players going on Thursday. Does he have anybody going, Craig? No, but he's uh, got Saturday's game. Okay, he's got, uh, Jordan Reed and Matthews. All right. So then we'll we'll know a lot before Sunday even happens, and then finally. Well, then we, well, we also have some Mondays though. Like Tree yeah. has some Monday players, so this is actually a whole week event. 
Wow, this is a long Tonto Bowl. I, you know, I hope for a close matchup because they're more fun to watch. I do too. Yeah. I, I will. I'll, I'll be watching. Definitely yeah. Thursday night. I'll be. Wow. I'll, I'll be. I'll be rooting. I'll be. I'll be watching on TV or on my phone somehow. Yeah, I'll be probably checking in on my phone. Um, but I'll say this. I, you know, it's a heart pick for sure. So I'm gonna give Possum Magic the heart, and I'm gonna give him my gut. I think that Philip Rivers is gonna show up when it counts the most. And I think that I was shocked that Gates and Inman, even though I think Rivers had three touchdowns, they didn't get one of them. Oh, really? So, no. So I think that oh, it was the Danny Woodhead show, right, which you got, you had, you beat uh, me with. On, I'm on just saying yeah. a worthy keeper, four touchdowns. <laughs> Danny Woodhead in the 14th. Yeah, Danny. Thank you. Great team name. Four touchdowns in one game. You can, yeah. That's Al Bundy. You can't get that. That's hard. That's, that is Al Bundy. I love it. All right. So I think Rivers and Gates – Gets him close to 100 points, and, and wow. probably and with Inman as well. Um, although you know that didn't do it enough. It wasn't enough for Jay. You know Jay had 100 points after Thursday against Bean, and he lost. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm not going to discount Craig because right now he is a machine. You know, I hate to say it, but he's built a great team. You know, he's on what a seven or eight game winning streak here. I don't know. It's something. It's something I crazy. Mean, He's the thing from Fantastic Four. Yes. Nice avatar, by the way. Very nice avatar. And, I mean, he destroyed Gags last week. Even though Gags put up a good fight, he destroyed him. Yeah, he did. I guess, uh, I mean, Mike Tyson style. Yeah. Um, I will say, I don't know if you saw this on the news today, but Donald Trump, his latest remark was he said that Clint, uh, yeah, Clinton got schlonged by Barack Obama in the election. <laughs> I, I think it's not. safe to say. Schlonged. <laughs> he did. Wow. And I don't think it's safe to say that Gags got schlonged by Kabisic. Oh, that's he did. So, I mean, I guess I guess uh, Kabisic is the guy that uh, Mike wants to date. Gags wants to date now because he got possibly. schlonged. Schlonged. Got a good schlonging. <laughs> good schlonging by the turkey leg penis. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's bad. Terrible. Uh, but, yeah, I'm giving Trey the, the, the victory. I'm giving him Taunted Bowl 13. He's going to get his first championship. He's finally going to get his name. On that trophy. That's my prediction. <laughs> He's going to have that parade. He's going to have the yeah. parade down the street with his yeah. kids. I hope so. I'll be there. I'll be there, too. I'll do the ticker tape. We'll get, like, a little Barbie car for them to ride in and, and have Tree Size do a speech. Have, like, a coach come out of nowhere. He'll cry. I, I'd cry yeah. myself. Yeah. be a beautiful thing. I mean, he's, as we all know, we've said it many times, he is one of the only, the only original member of the league who hasn't won a championship. He's like John Elway. Like he, I mean, or Dan Marino. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. John Elway wanted to. I'm, ba I'm like, baiting you. You're baiting me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Wouldn't be prudent. Uh, no. So yeah, it took John Elway a long time to get his championship. So maybe Tree Size will be John Elway. Yeah. And you know what? Craig was kind of rubbing it in that he was the one who beat Tree Size in Taunted Bowl too. So this is a little bit of revenge here. I, I would love it if it was a, a yeah. revenge game. Yeah. Like. Oh man! And you know, Cheese Ice wants it so bad. Dude, oh, dude, well, so does Craig, though. Oh yeah, Craig wants it bad. Craig knows he's in that kitchen. He's he's calculating. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh yeah. god, I can't wait. Yeah, it's tense, probably yeah. tense. Very tense. Tree Ice probably won't even go to go into Winberg. <laughs> he won't cross any lines. That line. Nope. He might like just continue on fifty six <laughs> through it. He'll like take the long way through Ogletown <laughs> to get to somewhere. Cause he can't do it. He won't do it. <laughs> Because what if they actually, like, bumped into each other's sheets? <laughs> <laughs> the most awkward uh, moment ever. Would they just glare at each other? <laughs> if it was me, I would. I wouldn't say a word. I would just glare. I wouldn't say good luck. I would just glare. Yep. yep. And as I was walking out, I'd probably, like, throw something at him and run. <laughs> Slash a tire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, suck it, isotopes. And, like, stab a tire and run. 20 years from now, that's what will be happening. <laughs> Especially when everybody's retired and then like people have way too much time on their hands. Oh, man. <laughs> it was like, like the movie Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> Just like certain things they do. I had like, I gotta be honest, I had so many, like I thought I was, before these injuries, I thought I was gonna win. I really had a strong feeling. I like had these these plans in my mind about what I was gonna do with the trophy oh, and how man. I was gonna spend the money and and then once the injuries started happening, I knew I, I knew it was I was over. It was done. I was like, ah. Uh. So it was tough. Yeah, you were you you had a rough year. Yeah, uh, that's putting it lightly. <laughs> All right, final thoughts because I got three percent left on my phone. <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, I mean, we'll probably do next season, next week as well. Yeah. Great season. Had a blood. Had a fun. Had a, had, a, had a fun. Had a blast. Uh, enjoyed everybody. Uh, enjoyed the calls. Love the new segment. Bean is talking. Um, 
looking forward to next year already. Uh, trying to think of strategies. Looking forward to the commissioner being 100% the commissioner and, yeah. and competitive. Uh, and hopefully my injury season, injury laden season was a fluke. Um, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen again. No, never say never, Brian. Uh, yeah, no, it was a great time, guys. Good luck in everything in life. Have a great Christmas, a good New Year, um, and whatever else you guys are planning. And uh, good luck to the both of you guys. And uh, wouldn't have it any other way. Tauntable yep. 2 rematch. Yep. Uh, may the best team win. Um, Craig, don't forget the fa- about the Fantasy Gods because they never do. Fantasy Gods are coming to get you this week. Um, oh, wow. You have you cursed yourself at whatever it was, week six or seven. So I think this is the payback week. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Beyond Merry Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Gotta say all of them. Festivus. Yeah, Festivus for the rest of us. Festivus. Oh, and also, uh... We're, we're turning into Craig right now. We are kind of... <laughs> <laughs> no, you hang up. I forgot, like, my train of thought. Crap! Uh, it was about Craig. Uh, what'd you say about the gods and stuff? Uh, just the fact that he, he's gonna be striked down this week. You know? He, he cursed himself in week six or seven. And, uh... And this is the week that he gets the payback. I predict that Craig loses... With a with the score of over two hundred because Possum Magic has a higher two hundred point. Wow. Yeah. The I, worst uh, way to go down. I can't remember what I was gonna say. Right, okay. I'm All right. Um yep. Merry Christmas, happy new year, and uh, we'll do one more show before the end of the year and then yes. we'll all start planning for the following year. Get I'm those a, keepers ready. Sorry, I'm as stunned as LaShawn McCoy when he lost to the Eagles right now. <laughs> I can't <laughs> come up with any words. All right, well just type it into the smack talk. <laughs> Whatever you think of it. Okay, uh, I've only got only got some words left in my in me, and I'm sure you know what they are, Brian. Are, are you, you ready? ready, darling? I am ready. Let's do it. Go, 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 go.